Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today is a very foggy, rainy, misty November day and I thought it was perfect to talk to you about my last three reads and also just catch you up on some of the unofficial readathons I'm doing and buddy reads and everything. I've been trying to think of a way to do shorter videos um, and so this is my attempt at that, maybe just doing a few uh, talk about like the last three that I finished and just update you on readathons. So we'll see how it works. But um, so I have read three books recently. I really was just coming off my Victober high and I was so excited. But I got into some buddy reads, some longer buddy reads. And so I just was kind of working on those. But then I felt a little bit like not sure what I was in the mood for. So I started a whole bunch of stuff. And so these are the three I finished. I finished how to Be a Moonflower by Katie Daisy. This is a nonfiction collection of art and quotes and kind of just like common sense um, sort of reflections. It is gorgeously illustrated, and I got this as a rec recommendation on a blog that I love, Ponderings from the Ingle Nook, and I just, it was just lovely. I counted this for Ellie's um, one of Ellie's at, over at My Cozy Chronicles, her prompts, she has a readathon going on right now. Her readathon prompts are so beautiful and sweet. And her new readathon is Misty Mornings and Coffee. I'll link the uh, prompts below or the announcement video if you're interested in it. And this was a nonfiction book that inspires you. And I just really enjoyed this. I will say some of the world view is not the same as mine but I still could really pull away a whole bunch of inspiration and I love like the quotes and the artwork it was just so sweet and beautiful the second thing I finished was I read um it was kind of like a fairy tale or fantasy type retelling I didn't really know what it was I think some it was on one of my lists and it finally came in from the library and this was Katura and the and Lord Death um, by Martine Leavitt, and this was so atmospheric. It seemed like kind of a mashup. Reminded me, I think I've heard of, I've never read um, 1,000 Nights um, or Arabian Tales. Um, it kind of reminded me of what I've heard about some of that, um, but it just had just such an interesting story. It, it's about a young girl who wanders into the forest after this magical like white heart like this you know like this large deer and she ends up meeting lord death and i thought this was just so interesting it talks a lot about sacrifice about family it just had like a whole bunch of fairy tale feeling mashed up into it it was definitely on the dark side um i was really interested in some of the characters i really liked katura the main character um, it did have like this magical gross eyeball and it just had some dark elements, but I really enjoyed this. I don't know if this is YA or if it's, uh, middle grade. I think it might be a little dark for middle grade, but I really enjoyed it. And I counted it for the Thanksgiving dinner readathon for kind of, it didn't perfectly fit, but she had one of the prompts is cranberries, enemies to lovers. And I counted it for that prompt. And then the third thing I read, I read the first in this uh, Betty Neal's collection. It's a, a dual bind-up, so there's two stories in here. It's called Tangled Autumn, and I read this for a fall and autumn theme book under Sweet Potatoes in the Thanksgiving read-along. And um, I'm not sure if there's any other ones. I know the Moonflower could be also counted for nonfiction November, too. Um, there is some different autumn prompts in all of those. But I really enjoyed the setting. The setting was Scotland, um, and we have um, the main character. Her name is Safa Denvish, Denvish. and she's leaving London. Um, she, um, her ex-boyfriend was a doctor in the hospital she worked at, and her uncle has a job for her for being the nurse for a private client in Scotland. And so she's going there, and... I love the setting. It was just so beautiful and all the homey details and just the the descriptions of the food and the clothing and it's that's that's Betty Neal's strength. If you're not familiar with her, she I'm pretty sure I've read a few of Betty Neal's over the years. These are clean romance. 
and they are like very um they're very formulaic so it's always a doctor love interest and usually he's dutch and usually the female protagonist is a nurse and this is very much in line with betty neal's own life uh she married a dutch doctor and so it's the the story itself is okay the romance story is okay i do tend to despise some of the uh, misunderstandings and like cold sho shoulders in the romance uh, story but the setting itself I really love it and it's just fun and light it kind of reminds me of just like a cozy mystery something just to kind of have as a palate cleanser between your books so that is where I'm at with my three latest finishes um, I have four different readathons I'm kind of unofficially participating in I really want to get to some things from Moore Montgomery. There's five prompts, and I have uh, some things that would fulfill three of them. I love Ellie's Gentle Readathon, so I'll check that Misty Mornings and Coffee out. I'm doing the Thanksgiving Dinner Readathon, and then Nonfiction November, I have some things, but I'm so slow. So um, I have technically four buddy reads this month, and so I'm working slowly on Dombey and Son and the Makioka Mac Sisters. And I, pretty soon, next week, I'm going to start Countess Kate by Charlotte Mary Young with some people. And then possibly Julie by Catherine Marshall with somebody um, towards the end of the month, I think. Uh, so I have four books right now going on my Kindle that are actually pretty good. I was really disappointed. I tried Heather Fawcett's The Language of Ghosts. This is billed as for 8 to 12-year-olds. And I felt like it had some adult content in it that wasn't appropriate for children. And so it made me feel so disappointed because it's billed as a Penderwick Howl's Moving Castle mashup. And I was really enjoying the start of the story. Um, but I just decided to DNF it because I was so disappointed in some of the stuff that was in there. And maybe I'm just unrealistic. But I was disappointed. So I'm trying another one of hers. And that is about, it's something in the ice, is it Emmett and the Ice Dragons? because I loved her writing style and the things I've read by her. Um, so I'm trying that. I have Kill the Dawn, which is an indie release. It's a retelling of Macbeth using Vikings, and I'm loving it, um, by Emily Hase. And then I have, um, what else do I have on my Kindle? I have, oh, a Jane Austen mystery. It's a Christmas mystery, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, and then I also have, um, Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, James Bird's uh, The Second Chance for Benjamin Waterfalls. And I had read his The Brave years ago, and he's kind of a magical realist writer. Um, they're billed for children, but I don't think they're for children at all. I think they're YA or an adult because of the content. However, I love his writing style, and I'm really enjoying it. So, so let me know if you've read any of those, if you're interested in any of them, and we can chat below, and I will talk to you soon.